Good afternoon. How are you today? It's time for our topic today. We'll be looking at corporate ethics. Learning outcomes. Upon completion of this class, students should be able to have a proper understanding of corporate ethics, demonstrate ethical awareness, and apply ethical principles in decision making. A quick agenda is definition, overview of ethical theories, case study review, ethical issues that arise in business, and references. Now, what are et corporate ethics? It is a code of conduct imposed on an employee or a number a member of a certain profession um, by Baumont 1968. Another author says it is the study of business situations, activities, and decisions where issues of right and wrong are discussed, according to Crane 1999. Some argue it is an employee's perception of their firm's ethical practices. So we could say corporate ethics is, uh, refers to the issue of what are good and bad, what is right and what is wrong, what is fair and what is unfair, what is moral and what is immoral, what is proper and what is improper as in human action. In short, corporate ethics we're referring to mean a code of conduct. It tells a person how to behave with another person or in any particular context. Ethical theories overview. Now, in this ethical theory overview, while none of these theories are perfect, there are, are drawbacks in all these theories. Let's take the first one, divine command theory. The divine command theory states that it behaves on a framework of a theistic, that is to say framework that every decision morality comes from God. Morality and duty comes from God and we add air to that uh, that aspect. However, that has been called to question about our decision of depending on God's moral in judgment as it were. And that criticism is the infiltral dilemma. That dilemma states that um, are, are the rules that we are keeping and we are adhering to are these rules are is it are they right that we are keeping to these rules based on they were commanded by God or is it that the commands that God has given about these rules that we are adhering to is it that it is right to adhere to them and that um, uh, it will throw dilemma. Is, is a question that has called this particular theory that is uh, as a drawback based on authors. The natural law theory, uh, but from Kant, the natural law theory stipulates that as human beings, we all have moral ability in us. That is a natural law theory. And that we are there are basic good in every human being. Uh, and that therefore, there are basic principles that we must adhere to, the issue of life, about reproduction, education of offspring, seeking God or living in the society or avoiding of offense to a group of people or to, to shun ignorance. However, this has been queried based on the is alt gap. And what does that mean? It means that it gives no, no basic, you know, human nature cut across all societies and all cultures and that is a drawback also there is no human reason human human nature is 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 corrupt and, and based on that that law is called to question like now what look at the third one utilitarianism in utilitarianism we are talking about seeking the better good of all while you are seeking to please your pleasure, as it were, but you are seeking pleasure in the way of seeking the better good for the betterment of majority of persons. Say, for example, you have your birthday, and in your birthday you like Thai food, and so you like your Thai food, but because your family members are not all looking for Thai food. You prefer to take or go to a Chinese restaurant. Restaurant. You are foregoing your own, you know, your own pleasure 
at the extent of the bigger good of everything. But this has been questioned also based on the repugnant conclusion. In fact, to say that uh, you're foregoing the better good of anybody, of everybody might actually be infringing on the right of another person. And, and that is what the query has been given today. Is. Let's look at the ontology the theory of deontology. In the theory of deontology, it, it states that you know you need to adhere to the rules and regulations. Your rules and regulations, your duties. It's in the, these rules and regulations are seen as duties, and you need to adhere to them when you are making a decision. When you are making a decision that has to do with ethics. However, this has been queried based on the moral inflexibility because of what? Because it's argued that there's no rationale to determine that action that this person is taking. There's no logic behind it. And so it has been called to question. And the last one there is the virtue ethics. The virtue ethics, is, you know, from Aristotle state that we all have good in us. We all have, you know, good inherent in us as human beings. And therefore, we need to always be looking of, uh, there's, there's virtue in us. However, this has been queried by, based on the institutional psychology of the fact that for those people who believe in, 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 in virtue achieve or live by virtue achieve, they are not bound by strict rules. And because they're not bound by strict rules, uh, making right decision or making ethical decision is called to question. Now, let's look at a case study, the case study of Enron. Now, Enron was, is an, Ameri was, uh, was an American company uh, that uh, went bust in 2001. And based on this, the lacks, the problem of ethical issues, ethical accounting practices, they overstated their profit for so long. And a series of events involving dubious accounting practices that resulted in bankruptcy of the energy commodities and service company, you know, also which led to the dissolution of the accounting firm Arthur Anderson. So this is an example of ethical issue in business that is prevalent. So I'll, I think I'll end the lecture today here. I'll see you in the next class. Uh, thank you.